Hello everyone, welcome to another live stream. My name is Shane Olson and today we're going to be sculpting a, a fish. But it's not just any fish, it's a boar fish. Hey, what's up Neil? I forgot to go grab my file. So let me go grab it here. Da, da, da. Where are we? Reference. There we are. Bonk. Okay, I usually have this done by now. My fish. How are we doing today? Hey, what's up, Mark? Okay, looks like the title is still something else. Hey, what's up, Brad? Okay, let's see if this works. Spelt sculpting wrong. Hold on. <laughs> Come on, give me a suggestion. Okay. Here we go. Hopefully that fixes things. Probably not, but hey. <laughs> okay, at least I tried. All right. Let's get started with this little boar fish. He's hilarious. My daughter said it looks like a binky. <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you. It worked on Twitch. Okay, great. Okay, so we're going to start with this body. I always, I always tell my students that fish are just like a head without a body. That's pretty much what a fish is. So let's just do a head without a body. Make him orange. Okay, let's see. Let's get this shape going. I love this. I love the shapes that are happening on this boar fish. It's really funny. Um. Okay, let's pull out his his rear end right away here. How's everybody doing today? Are you sculpting? Getting a chance to get some sculpting in? It is a really nice day here today. I'm gonna pull in his brows like so. And pull the sides back. I think I'm gonna Z remesh this right away. Hey, Mathilda, how are you doing? So you're playing with Z, uh, Z Rush and Character Creator 4, nice. I just barely um, did a character for Reillusion Character Creator that's hopefully going to be in their store one day that you can all download and purchase. Okay, so I'm going to do same and hit it. See what it gives me. Not bad. Okay. Let's put kind of a little lump here going down to the back end. Got a glow. Hello. Welcome. How are you? I'm gonna make this stumpy shape right there. And then his brows come clear out to where his ears are. Oh, are you? <laughs> I want to check it out. Those are coming along so, so well. I watched your CC and ZBrush video. Oh, awesome. That's great. Thanks for telling me. Is this a character for 3D printing? Uh, no, it's kind of just for fun. It's for more, more for rendering. I mean, I, I could 3D, 3D print it, but uh, this, this will probably be for, just for fun. Okay. Hello, hello. Um, okay, I need to figure out how to build his lower jaw and turn this into his upper jaw. So what I'm gonna do, this little trick, 
I'm going to duplicate this body. Let's do a, let's save it before we get too far. Boarfish. I like how Alexander named it Boarfish. It's pretty funny. Okay. So the reason I duplicated this is because I'm going to put a different color on this bottom one. Okay, so now we have two. And I'm going to I'm going to slightly shrink the lower one. So just scaling it down just a tad. Anastasia, how are you? And then I'll go back to this uh the orange one and then I'm going to reveal the other one underneath. Like so. Now this will become and I can do I can hit transparent so I can see what's happening underneath there. But basically I'm I'm wanting to create this upper jaw with this upper piece. Kinda like this. And then I don't want to take it all the way back down the tail because this is just painted. So I'm just going to kind of roll it to the corner of the mouth and then just drop it off there. No question, how can I give my sculpture thickness for printing? Reverse masking? Um, I, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Is So are, do you have thin pieces like capes and things like that and you want to make them have more thickness or are you hollowing them out needs walls okay, I'm pushing this down and I'm going to get rid of all this extra stuff by using the knife brush, knife cut right here. And we're just going to cut this off. You mean hollowing. Okay. Well, for hollowing, I typically do it in my slicing software. And my slicing software of choice is I like lychee slicer. I like the fruit, lychee fruit. Um... And it does hollowing for you, and it use, um, and it you it it shows you the thickness, and it allows you to make drain plugs and the whole bit, the whole thing. I don't do it in ZBrush. Yeah, mask extract is okay, but it it doesn't give you as nice of results as the the slicing program does. Lychee is L-Y-C-H-E-E. -E. Hey, Ian, how are you? So, Lychee Slicer. It's by Mango3D.io. So, this one. Lychee Slicer. And uh, the guy who, who started this company, his name is Thomas. He actually worked for Pixelogic back in the day, and uh, then he he started this uh, lychee uh, 3D mango company, Mango 3D, and uh, made lychee slicer. He actually, if you can see, can you see this right here? This is Mickey Mouse back on my shelf. When I was at the ZBrush Summit this year, Thomas printed this out for me, and he he set it up in lychee slicer during the summit, <laughs> and he printed it out during the summit and gave it to me so yeah okay so this is fantastic i love lychee slicer it's it's uh yeah there's there's also chitu box i have to say it i have to pronounce it really well or else it sounds like i'm saying a swear word <laughs> and chitu box is free lychee has a free version but um yeah that's another one you can look into as well and it works okay I, I like lychee better. Okay, so I'm going to z-remesh this. Same. Just to give it. Pull this down.
Hey, Onyx, how are you? Yeah, boarfish. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? When applying for jobs, is it good to model from very well-known characters so recruiters know you can do the job? Uh, no. Actually, uh, I kind of go opposite of that. Um, advice on ratio of perso versus non perso. I'm not quite sure what perso means, but um, what I would do is I would find a a concept that you're passionate about. Like for example, like this this boar fish. I I selected this because I thought it was hilarious and um looked like it was fun to sculpt, even though it's kind of just a head, you know? I, I do these busts during these live streams because it's, I can do it in a, a couple hours, you know? Um, but I would do a full character if you can, or you can start with just a bust if, you know, if you're just starting out. And don't pick one based off of how popular the character is. In fact, I would do the opposite because those characters are owned by companies typically, like Disney or Marvel or whoever you're trying to do anime um and if you know it's it, there's no one that you can really ask if it's if, ask their permission if you can use it whereas like with alexander Keita, for example i've reached out to him and asked him for permission to use his concepts for this and that's kind of the big difference um so that is um yeah that's that's my advice for for putting portfolio characters in your portfolio. I'd choose ones that that you're passionate about for m most of all and and ones that you can ask permission for. And then include the concept in your portfolio if you can. And the reason why is that's what shows potential clients that you can actually match a concept with your 3D art. You just show them Put it in there. You're welcome. Uh, what is the difference between ZBrush slicing and lychee slicing? Do okay. So ZBrush does not have a slicer. A slicer is a program that takes the 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 model and actually slices it up for a 3D print to happen. That's what a slicer does. So it 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 makes the layers that are going to be printed. That's part of the processing that it has to do. ZBrush does not do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So also, you know, the slicing software will also do hollow, well, most of them will also do hollowing, drain plugs, and supports with, with sleds on the bottom. Like um, all the supports will go down to the sleds rather than right straight down to the build plate. That way you can cut, use a, kind of a, a palette knife kind of a thing to, to break the supports off of the build plate. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. There we go. Every time you, hey, what's up, Pedro? Every time you uh, Z remesh, it gets rid of the color. So you have to do it again. So eventually I'll paint this kind of lighter beige color on the body here. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is and just kind of continue to sculpt on this. Okay, let's give him that, that fun lower lip here, sticking out. And usually those sli the slicing software, it will allow you to like type in the printer that you have, and then it will give you the build plate size that you, you need to fill. And then you basically take a moment to uh, translate and rotate all of your objects into position, um, you know, the best that you can. And then from there, 
you uh, support it and you know what I think I'm going to add this nose as a separate piece it's very very thin here so I'm just thinking about this while I'm while I'm talking <laughs> and then I need to put his uh, his big tusks coming out and leave some room for those right there and then his lip kind of hangs down All right. Yeah, lychee slicer is the way to go. It's really fun to use. I'm also wondering what a, a Barbarossa Barbarossa fish would look like. <laughs> well, you know, maybe maybe you reach out to Alexander and ask him what it would look like. <laughs> makes this beautiful funny character it's right here you can see alexander Keda. he's from uh, uh he's from the ukraine and i believe neil uh neil has posted the link to his um actually are you on no you're on you're on Twitch. Yeah, you should see the links coming from Neil. There you go. Thanks, Neil. Boom. There's his Instagram. Okay, so this will be... So, so his eye cavity it has this big circle, and then his little eyeball is pushed towards the front of that eye cavity, and then he has this little lower eyelid down here that I need to put in there. So all of that will be... is yet to come. All right. Let me save this. I did get permission to show you my character that I did for Reillusion if you guys want to see it. I'll pull it open really quick and show you what I did over the weekend. Mm-hmm. really big in the scene so, oh where's her shoes this is an earlier version hold on a second <laughs> okay let's see where the heck did it go oh it's a project it's a project okay I have to load it from, did you guys know you can load Z tools from projects? See this right here, load tools from projects. You might, you see that, where is my, my top bar, there you go, okay. <laughs> All right, let's, let's load it from a project and then let's go get the project. All right, this is better. There we go. There she is, okay. So I just made this character this weekend. So this is, um, this is from Character Creator. So I started with their, um, they made a cartoon character base. Let's see, here she is over in Character Creator. And if you go to, um, if you go to templates, and then you go to base bodies over here. If any of you guys use character creator, um, body more, where is it? I always get confused where these things are. Hey, what's going on, Ashley? How are you doing? Welcome. Welcome. I caught your, I caught the end of your stream last Wednesday. I'm like, Hey, it, Oh, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> I've heard of it so that you don't need to do everything. Well, it's it's an if you use their base mesh, it's automatic it's automatic rigging, basically. You still have to do stuff, but just not as much. Um not body morphs. Gosh dang, is it under character? There we go, base. Okay. So these two. 
So the the neutral female and the neutral male, um, those those both come from my suggestion to them, and they made them and put them in here, and you can go get them from their from their store. And I started with uh, the female, and then I made this character based off of that, and then I made all the clothing and everything, and ZBrush, and the hair and all that. So, um, yeah, there you go. And it's really fun because you can push their character base back and forth. So this has really good topology, and then you can put some, uh, you can put textures on there, you can give them clothes and all that kind of stuff. And you can give them some motion. So as soon as you push it back, it's automatically rigged and you can, you know, add some, some motion. So that's super, super fun. What are you up to today, Ashley? What's going on? What's cool? <laughs> You like this boar fish? Not to sound weird or anything, but can you remove the clothes to change? What do you mean? Can you, I mean, yeah, you can take the clothes and you can put whatever clothes you want on it. Hey, Tom, how are you? It's been a while. Okay, let's get that nose in there. Yeah, it's funny, huh? Like I said, my, my daughter said it looks like a binky. I don't know how. Kind of, I guess. <laughs> uh. On the base, the base model does not have clothes. I put, I put those on. I built them and put them on there. So you can you can build whatever clothes you want. I'm using a stitch brush to add stitches to a mesh, but I want the stitches to be in a different poly group. Is that possible? Uh, it depends on what kind of a stitch brush you have. If it's a stitch brush that's a actually adding new geometry, like new like islands of geometry, then yes. But if you're doing a like an alpha based offset stitch brush, then no. I always use geometry based stitch brushes for that very reason. Let's give him the super pointy nose. And that's just turning on AccuCurve to make it pointy. It's a fish. It's a boar fish. Or fish. Let's get it down here a little bit further. Yeah, geometry based stitch brushes. So let me see if I have any. Um because I have I have both. I think it might be stitch, stitch, stitch. Where are they? I have too many brushes. I think the one that I'm looking at right here might do it, but I can't remember. Let's try it. No. Nope, this is uh, not geometry based. <laughs> stitch basic, this might be. Nope. <laughs> I got to get rid of those. I never use them. It might be an IMM brush, like all these insert multi mesh ones. Right now, we're wishing dragons. Oh, are you, are you going to be playing that one? Um, no, I, I found a really good stitch brush that's an insert multi mesh that just makes a bunch of stitches. I used it on that Mickey Mouse right there, right there, because he's he's riding on some luggage and the luggage has stitches all around it. Oh yeah, of course, right? <laughs> oh goodness, I have I have kind of kept myself away from like trailers and stuff. So, so I can have a, a fresh outlook on it. I know it's hard, but I've done that. But 
I've been playing Enshrouded a lot lately. Enshrouded is a great game. I, I now that <laughs> as I get older, it's so funny the games that I gravitate towards. I gravitate towards like survival crafting games. Just uh you know like like Valheim and Grounded and yeah, I, lo I love it. Drown it. <laughs> it's so what what type of character are you playing as? Like ranger, mage or or melee or combo? <laughs> I'm all over the place. My ADHD brain wants to try everything, so I love their skill tree cuz I can like back it out and try something else and back it out and try something else. Otherwise, I'd be starting new characters every other day. They need to include those things for people like me. <laughs> N, N shrouded, not shrouded, like E N, like how, uh, how a cube spelled it. Yeah. Right above here. Um, and the reason why it's called in shrouded is because part of the world is covered in shroud. So it's really cool. It's like this fog and you go down into it. It's almost like underwater because it's like crusty. It's, it's, it doesn't have a lot of bugs. Not really. I haven't found many anyway. Uh, yeah, it was an IMM stitch brush, Neil. Plays a ranger. Oh yeah, ranger's great. Oh yeah, so that's the biggest difference with Enshrouded is it's voxel based, meaning that you can uh you can manipulate anything. You can manipulate the terrain. Oh, you found it. Thank you, Neil. You're awesome. Okay. So I'm going to bring this down and, and give this guy some free advertisement. But this is, yeah, this is the one I used. Oh, right, right. I recognize these, uh, these icons right here. Gosh, where are they then? I do not see them in my list. I wonder if I didn't move them over. Okay. Every time a new ZBrush releases, I have to move them all over. And sometimes... Yeah, so the... It's just different stitches, but these stitches are actual geometry. So it's really nice because then you can like push them in further into the surface of the whatever object you drew them on, and they will bake with your normal maps really well, and they will print really well. So yeah, geometry base, and they're non-destructive. So let's say your art director comes back and he's like, hey, those stitches are too close together, or they're not big enough, or they're too small, or whatever art direction you get. If you did like a surface stitch, like in the actual surface of the object, you'd have to like wipe your slate clean, like sculpt back over it and remove them or put them on a layer and then fix them, right? But with geometry-based stitches, you can just do them again. Just erase them or hide them and do them again. So um, anyway, and, and another secret is you can actually keep it in its own subtool and you can, well, I wouldn't say that. I was going to say you can keep the curves, but you can't really keep the curves. So never mind. Never mind what I was saying. <laughs> I recently discovered Terraria. Oh, Terraria is a great, great version of a building survival game. I played it a ton with my... I have a, I have a gaming group that I play with every Wednesday, and we always, we always look for... Um, I get something for free again? I don't know about free. The stitching brushes... Oh, I guess they are free. There you go. Free. I didn't even notice, but uh, I would leave this person a tip for making these because they're phenomenal and they deserve the support. <laughs> Stitching body parts? I mean, you could, but no. Free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great to play with kids. Great to play with adults that act like kids. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do a lot of medical things. There you go. There's some, there, yeah, stitches. You could totally use them for that. All right, let's get these nostrils pushed in so I can Z remesh this. So Z remesher is a is an interesting beast because it will it will adhere to or cling to peaks and valleys. That's what it likes. And so the more peaks and valleys you can give it, the better off your sculpt. Is there a link to your personal work? Hey Esther, how are you? Uh, in the description, I'm curious to see. Um, I don't think there is actually, but it's my name is Shane Olson. Not I, I think, I think the description or the the title is wrong. 
Uh, but I'll I'll post it in here so you can get it. And I need to update my I need to update my portfolio so bad. But this is this is what my art looks like. Some of the stuff I've done. I've done a couple of these on stream too. If you want to go back and watch them, like I did this cowboy on stream and this pirate girl on stream. I also teach an online course called the 3D Character Workshop, and I walk you through how to build this character right here. Um, yeah. So there you go. How do you hold your pen? Um, I hold it like this. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I hold it like this. <laughs> uh, no, I'm totally kidding. The reason I hold it like this is so I can touch the the pen buttons right here. And the back pen button I set to right click so I can navigate inside of ZBrush really easily. And then the front button I I put to my custom menu. So whenever I hit that button, it pops up this menu. And again, speaking of free, I give away my user interface, which comes with this menu for free. And then uh, I, I tell you how to set it up so you can, um, oh, you can, I, I, I will also, if it depends on where it's actually rolling in my hand, sometimes I'll use my thumb. Yeah. Sometimes I'll use my thumb. Sometimes I'll use my fingers. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day <laughs> or where the pen just ends up in my hand. It's not a bad question, you know? Now that I think about it, I use my thumb way more. <laughs> now that I'm doing it right now, thumb. Okay. <laughs> Holding it with for my index finger to hit. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's thumb. I said I said index finger, and I lied. I'm a liar. The thing is, I don't pay attention enough to know. Okay, I'm gonna change this to Sculptress Pro because I'm getting, I'm running out of geometry. So I'm gonna hit Control D twice. Get rid of the lower. And then turn on Ye old Sculptress Pro. A roller do you remember those <laughs> do you remember those like ergonomic track balls it wasn't a mouse it was just like a ball that you would like roll around with your fingers man i tried one of those one time and i couldn't i couldn't deal with it a 3d ma yeah yeah look at this look at this <laughs> all right It looks like, let me find it. I'll find an old one. <laughs> Here you go. Well, this is, here's a Wikipedia on it. Oh, what the, get out of here with that. Okay, unhook, there it is. Yeah, so look at this. This was the old like trackball mouse. And this is kind of a newer iteration I think it helps with like carpal tunnel and stuff, but I don't know if it would. Yeah, trackball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate it. So one thing I do like though, is this. I love this thing. This is a space mouse by 3D Connections, not sponsored. Um, you should not sculpt with the mouse, Esther. Do not, do not, do not. Well, you can use a mouse some of the time, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, anyway, this thing or just the knob, you can buy just the knob by itself, or you can get like the, there's a pro version and then there's like this screen version. You don't need the, this crazy screen version. The display just kind of tells you what, what the buttons do. They're kind of hooked up to these buttons right here. You don't need it. It's too crazy. Yeah, there you go, Esther. That's that's the way to do it. 
Yeah, it's good for it's good for shortcuts. I find myself not using the shortcuts very much. I find myself using just the knob. And the reason why is because it unifies the navigation across 3D applications. And what that means is it doesn't break your brain when you move from like ZBrush to like Cinema 4D or something with different navigation. Then you don't have to get used to it. You just you just use the knob. <laughs> And it, and it works really great. Yeah, so in, in any other, like Character Creator. So check this out, Character Creator. I go over there. Okay, now I'm in Character Creator. And lo and behold, the knob uses the same navigation. Same, same. I'm using it with that. It does. It does. <laughs> and it works with, it works with everything except for dare I say, substance modeler so far. But everything else <laughs> works with. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think it works with Maya pretty good. Adobe, not really, well, not, not modeler, but not, I don't think it works with Photoshop. Let's see. It, it, it zooms in and out, but I guess that's really weird. It, it has a delay in it. So I can zoom in it. Yeah, it kind of does. Hey, Lavender, thanks so much. Yeah, let me just tell you, the reason why you shouldn't use a mouse to sculpt with is because they're, it's button-based and not, uh, n not what is it called? Uh, Sensitivity-based. It doesn't have levels of sensitivity like... You can't do uh, uh, you can't do from like a light line to a heavy line back to a light line again because it's a hundred percent or nothing. Pressure sensitivity. Yep, it doesn't have pressure. It has. So what that means it's kind of like driving a car with a toggle switch instead of a gas pedal. You wouldn't want to do that. Okay, I think I got this going. I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing here. You guys are asking good questions, but it's got me distracted. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? Okay. That'd be very fun, yeah. <laughs> fun, fun in quotes. You can do box modeling with a mouse because it does not require pressure sensitivity. It requires clicking, holding, and dragging. But if you're sculpting, don't do it. Yeah, but why would you want to do that, Austin? Why would you want to, to put yourself through that pain and torture? I'll show you what you could not do, okay, with a mouse. See, we have the sphere right here. I'll show you. You you can't you can't do this. Light, heavy, light. There's no way you could do that with a mouse. Impossible. Let's do it again with more light, heavy, light, heavy. Yeah, you can't do that. because my keyboard is hard to reach with my setup i need a mini keyboard for hotkeys so my solution to that is i have a keyboard tray that i hook to the bottom of my desk that i put underneath my desk so i have easy access to it then you're not reaching just got to click the mouse really light <laughs> yeah that, that'll work okay <laughs> People paint in Excel spreadsheet. I mean, do what you want. <laughs> do what you want. I'm just offering advice. <laughs> ASCII art. Let me 
need to build a tray. They make them. You can just get them. I mean, you could build them, I guess. That would take time away from sculpting. <laughs> They're cheap. They're pretty cheap ones. Are you work or talk? Nicola, what do you mean? Are you saying I'm talking too much? Get back to work? Are you whipping me? Okay, sorry, sorry. You, you can get your money back. <laughs> Give you full refund. Getting these teeth in there. Look how they tuck up underneath there. Uh, yeah, Mr. Cricket, it's the letter C on your keyboard. Yeah, Neil, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, there you go. A cubed is spoken. These, this is a live stream, and it's I'm I'm uh, answering people's questions as they ask me live. So if you want to watch me not talk, you can watch the replay on f fast forward with the sound off. <laughs> and skip around. Are you still twitching your work? <laughs> what? Yes, A cubed is another streamer on here. I want to make these a little bigger. And she streams Wednesday nights. Is there a way to manipulate an edge loop or line of vertex using a curve in ZBrush? Not using a curve, but you can manipulate an edge or a vertice. I wish watching videos in fast speed made everyone have chipmunk voices. I know it doesn't. It just kind of speeds them up so they, <laughs> so they talk faster. last live two years ago she was live like last week are you talking about on her own channel yeah no people are coming after you ash goodness sakes <laughs> yeah she streams here with me you can manipulate a poly loop yes you can here i'll show you with the z modeler brush i'll show you I'll grab my ruler. Here's my ruler file, which I give away for free over on my website. <laughs> Let me turn off this texture. <laughs> okay, see all these little lines, these poly loops? Uh, just grab the Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, like so, hit the space bar, and then you can go to uh, slide, and then you say edge loop complete or edge loop partial. And then you click on that edge and you can slide it up and down. This has a subdivision. There you go. You can slide it up and down. That's it. I 
don't say that you don't talk, but you can talk while my who <laughs> dude who are you to say what I can and can't do? <laughs> if people ask questions and they want me to demo something, I'll stop and I'll demo it or I'll show what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna just sit and sculpt all the time. Sometimes I do, but not all the time. I'm here to answer questions. I move it with hands, it starts looking awful, but if I use curves, I get a nice flow. Oh yeah. So there's one trick I can show you how to really um, control your curves. Like if you wanna make a curve rush, you know? Um, basically, so see I have this body right here, and if I wanted to do a curve, like say, see this orange right here? This back, back. Say if I wanted to put some kind of, I don't know, something along that edge, Basically what I can do is I can do this, uh, like let's just say I'll put a mask on there. Let's do a loop, a mask loop, okay. So let me see, it kind of comes up here and goes down here and ends like this, okay? So that is an easy way to get a controlled curve. Okay, so if I want to make a curve out of this, um, basically what I can do is go to geometry and then see how it says edge loop mask border underneath edge loop. You can just pop this open edge loop mask border, click on that. And what it's going to do, it's going to give you a new poly group and a new edge in between those two poly groups like this. Now it's kind of, a, it's kind of chunky monkey right now. And if I want to clean that up, you just go to polish by features which is in the deformation menu. And then that smooths it right up. See that? Nice and smooth. Now, if I want to put something, a curve along that, the thing I just made, you go up to stroke under curves, sorry, under curve functions. And then there's this frame mesh button and you get to do frame mesh with three different options. You can do it along the border you can do it between poly groups or you can do it along creased edges. So if you have creased edges, okay. So let's turn off border and poly and uh, creased edges and just have poly groups. And now if I hit frame mesh, it gives me a curve right along that edge. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but now what I can do is I can go get an insert multi mesh brush like say this uh, curve tube, maybe, where is it? Curve, oh, here we go. Uh, curve tube, multi-tube, let's say, okay? So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and then I tap on that curve and it puts this tube all along that curve. And then if I want, I can make my brush bigger and tap on it, make it bigger. Or make it smaller, tap on it, make it smaller. Super cool. So I do that all the time when I need a controlled curve. All the time. It's really nice. Because if I were to just have the tube brush like I have now, and now I try and draw that curve around here, it's not, let's see, it's not controlled. It's kind of, it's just not very good. <laughs> so it's better to make a curve either by following creases or poly groups or, or openings. Yeah. Question on turntables when doing a turntable, how long do you make them? I'm thinking about 15 seconds. Yeah, I just, I, I kind of just make it and, and watch it. And if it starts to feel too long, then I'll shorten it up. Um, I go more on feel than actual frame count or whatever. Because some it depends on the character. If the character is really detailed, I'll slow it down. But if it's not as detailed, I'll, I'll speed it up. Okay. Now that I have this, let's go back here. You're here to answer questions, have fun, engage with the community. It's not a hard tutorial. If you want that, there are videos and courses for that, absolutely. These streams are not your private mentorships. Yeah, they're not. 
this is just demoing. If you need a part of it smooths, there's a smooth by group brush under smooth for anybody watching. Yep. So detail factors, yeah, yeah. It depends on how long you want to look at it, you know, or how long you want someone to look at it. Um, I wouldn't go too too slow because people get bored and click off. Uh, one another little tip is if you want to pull a color from your concept, make sure that you have the ring showing. So just hit Z on your on your keyboard to make this ring show up. And then hit C. And if you if you hold C down and hover over, you can see the colors changing in this color swatch right here. See all the colors change? You don't have to click. You just have to hover and then let go of C when you're done. Like I want this pink nose right here. I'm gonna let go, hit Z, and now I can paint with this pink if I want. Oops, I still have a curve going on. <laughs> Let's paint paint like this if I want to. I know a great workshop. Thanks, Lavender. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do teach a. I do teach a series of tutorials called the Three D Character Workshop. So if you want uninterrupted tutorials, you can go check it out. Three D Character Workshop dot com. The back of this nose looks like dark, like a dark pink or something. Yeah, and this is just temporary coloring just to because I always tell people coloring has weight. Well, this is you're watching Maxon's official channel. So Maxon is the makers of ZBrush. And they also make Cinema 4D. So we don't typically talk about other software during the during this live stream. I I mean we can a little bit, but. Thanks, Christopher. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you like my course. So if you go just really quick, if you go to my website, it looks like this. And here are my brushes. It also comes with my user interface and my ruler file for free. And if you scroll down more, this is my course with all these. I teach you how to make all these characters. You can click on this button and go check it out. And this is all the stuff. Yeah. Oh, and I also have a, a, a Blender add-on. I shouldn't say that, but I do. <laughs> okay. And this is a student, a bunch of student work students that have taken the course so yeah you can go check that out if you want and I don't advertise it much but I also have a mentorship it's called the acceleration program and it's weekly mentoring and then sometimes I also invite studio pro to come talk to us like yesterday we had one from DreamWorks and Netflix come talk to us about what they do and how they got to where they are and yes it's if you want to know more about it just send me a, a message if you go to back to that page and you go to uh, contact right here it'll send me an email so click on contact and say hey I want to know about the mentorship it's it's not cheap and it lasts a year. Um, it's much, much cheaper than say college for, for sure, but it's more expensive than the course because I'm meeting with you every week and there's um, private discord involved and yeah, lots of feedback. So I'm gonna be advertising it soon more. <laughs> Oh goodness. Yeah. And that's exactly why I created the mentorship, to be honest. 
Um, and the reason I started to do the fire, I call them fireside chats, where I just, uh, where I bring in people and talk. Ashley, we should have you come talk, if you would be willing. I would be happy to have you come yap about what you do. It's not a one-on-one, -on -one, it's group coaching. I do, I do a lot of one-on-ones in there, but not, it's, it, that's not what it is, it's group coaching. Dude, that emoji is so funny. <laughs> Me. <laughs> um, the reason I do group coaching is because I feel like more people can get more out of it. Like when you see feedback for other students, you can benefit from it yourself as well. If it's just a one-on-one -on -one thing and it's hidden behind closed doors, it doesn't. It only helps you, and not not everybody benefits. Did you know smooth also smooths color if you have RGB turned on? It's pretty neat. Oh, thanks, Wilberth. Speaking of my acceleration program, there's a couple of my students in here right now. Wilberth being one of them. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to blur this a little more all the way around. Sometimes I get, I don't know why I, I mess around with color that much. It's like I have so much more to do. Why am I screwing around with color? <laughs> oh, come on. What I got from college was the different parts in the field, like rigging, animation, coding. It helps you figure out what you want to continue learning. Went for game design. Yep. Yep. Do I always stream Mondays? Yes. I try. I missed the last two because of things happening. But yeah, I try to. Get rid of these facets. Oh, Shane's also starting to run it as a mock studio freelance so you can get that feel of working in a studio freelance how it would be in the real world. Yes, I did change up the structure of it. So when you first start, we talk about your, your goals, take a look at your portfolio and talk about like what, what would your fantasy studio or freelance gig be and then we, we figure out a concept to work on and, and then set a deadline and get at it. Okay, you know what? This is... Yeah, that's another... Because I'm trying to give people something that they wouldn't get at a normal institution or university or something like that, you know. And basically a mock freelance job I don't know that I've seen that at a university before. I designed for toys. Awesome. We also have uh, sculpting rooms where students hang out and work on their projects. It's kind of like an open lab, but it's on a Discord channel. Looks pretty good. Because networking is important. You never know if someone you're, you're in the class with, you might be working with or for in the future someday. <laughs> you're part of what Discord, Christopher? Part of my Discord? I'm talking about specifically the, the acceleration section. 
I don't know if you can see the acceleration section as a regular student. Right, right, yeah, so there's. There's a purple section. Right here. Hey, Jerome, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Oh, I must have it. I do have AccuCurve turned on. Sometimes when you when you turn on AccuCurve on your move brush, it will make a point in space. And so sometimes when you're moving, it, it'll make <laughs> it'll make these points. So sometimes when I'm pushing in, it's like big old point. You gotta remember to turn that off. I I hardly ever remember. I'm doing well. Thanks. Today is a beautiful day outside. Got the door open. The breeze coming in. It's nice. Is winter finally? I, you know what? In Utah, you never know. Because. Sometimes it snows in April and March. Let's go. Okay. And it, it could be like spring type weather, even summer type weather one day, and then it snows the next day. It's been known to do that. The, the motto in Utah is like, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. <laughs> Snowing here today in Indiana, man. Right ball was out in the UK again today. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Okay, let's split this off. Got red eyes. What do you need AccuCurve for? A uh, pointy, pointy things like these horns. Like if I want to make these horns pointy, so if I if I turn to the move brush, and regular move brush, it won't make. It won't make things pointy. Like if I drag this, see it does. It kind of stays the same. If I turn AccuCurve on, it changes the the fall off for the brush. And if I pull on this, see how it makes it way pointy and sharp. That's what AccuCurve does. Oh, got to change to the right sub tool here. Is it standard in ZBrush? Yes, it is. It's not a special thing. I mean, it's pretty special, but it's not custom. <laughs> oh, hey, we, hey, David. Same thing in Omaha. I didn't know you were in Omaha. So I recently created a cartoon hand, but it's right-handed only. Do you know how I'd mirror it for a left hand? Uh, yeah, just turn off local symmetry before you mirror, mirror and weld it. So right here, local symmetry, turn that off. Otherwise, it's going to mirror on itself, right? Because it's local. It'll just mirror across itself. Um, yeah, and there's also, if you have subdivision levels, uh, you can also use... There's a Z plugin called, um, what is it called? Subtool Master right here. Subtool Master also has a mirror function right there. And you can do that too. And that will mirror. Um, mirror and weld is great for like mirroring geometry with, within itself. 
And just regular mirror is good for just mirroring an entire object over. Is there a way to save that option on startup, the local symmetry? Le le like having it on, you mean, or off? I think it's, you can put it in the, then the Z startup utility. Yeah, right here. So, um, yeah, if you go, there's, this is an official ZBrush plugin. So you can go download it from Maxon's website, I believe. And it's called ZBrush startup utility. You can basically set, set things to be on or off on startup and local symmetry is one of them right there. So you can have it on or off. And I also set like this uh, Z or a uh, spotlight project off. Um, well, it's good to have on if you're going to be scaling. So see these tusks right here? I'll show you what local symmetry does. Okay. Um, if you turn it off, like it's off right now, and you want to scale this, say I want to put this point right at the base of this tusk right here, and I want to scale it up. If I do it now, it's going to scale across the center world axis. Right, so if I turn on the floor, you can see the line right up the middle. That's world center, and it's, it's scaling across world center. So if you turn on local symmetry, it's going to scale on the point where you set that point. See that? That's what it's good for. But if you're going to mirror or mirror and weld, you want to turn that off because it will mirror across itself versus mirroring across the world. So you can think of it as local and world space. Yeah, hopefully that helps you. Okay, he's looking like a like a skull pig. Let's get some eyebrows on there. probably notice that I always start things as a sphere and then I just kind of squish them around there's no insert eyebrow brush really I, there's, I'm sure somebody's made one but it's not necessary <laughs> oops let's go down make sure you're on the right sub tool And we'll bring this on down to cover that eyeball. So we get the right expression on it. And we can pull this around, just kind of drop it down. And if you start to get your geometry too stretched, so if we look at this, see it's starting to stretch a little bit. You can either move it so it's not so stretched and smooth it out. That's one option. The other option is you can just Z-remesh it. And you can, when you do a Z-remesh, you can hit same. Yeah, the orange is great. Love that color. I need to fix these nostrils. They're not very clean. <laughs> okay, <laughs> clean your nostrils, pig. Um, so if I go to Z-remesher, I can click on this word that says same and it will z remesh it at the exact same uh not exactly but very close to the same density but it'll reorganize the faces i had a hard time about zbrush ui accidentally press switch ui setup to close but ruined all my setup and shortcuts um okay so what you can do in case if you ever run into that again you can go to preferences and go to config and then go to either restore standard user interface if you're just using their standard one or restore custom user interface if you're using a custom one. And that will reset everything and you, you'll just be back on target. I use deformation mirror personally if I want. Anyone who wants to check that one out. Um, so that one's different though. So deformation mirror is not going to physically mirror your geometry. It's just going to look at both sides and see what's the same about them. Um, I'm thinking symmetry actually. Let's, let's go down here and look. Mirror, mirror. 
You're talking about this one, right? Um, so that one will actually just flip it on on one axis. It won't take what's on one side. And here, I'll just show you. I also have that on my user interface. So uh, again, well, let's turn off symmetry for a second and say if we have this, this one's weird and this one's good. And if you hit mirror, it just mirrors it from one side to the other. So it's not going to, um, <laughs> doing a little dance. It's not going to take what's over here and, and mirror it exactly the same over there. Mr. J, can ZBrush uh, support substance files? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's not the one I use then. When I does moves the sub tool and allows you to split it or not. Yeah, that's that's the one that's in the Z plugin right here. Um, it is in uh, Subtool Master Mirror right here. That's the one that allows you to split it or not. There's so many options, so many things. I don't know how I've memorized them all. Maybe, maybe using this program for eight years and that's all I've used. <laughs> maybe that's why. I don't know, because I'm not very good at memorizing things at all. Okay. Well, let's color this fillet. I was like, I didn't know how... I didn't download a plugin, but it's nice because of keep the part of the sub tool and make it its own. Yeah, it is. It's uh, that's what I used to use until I learned about uh, mirror and weld. Mirror and weld is great for um, like if you just want to use the same polygroups in the same object, it will mirror those polygroups over, and it will also sew down the center, which is great. I think just regular mirror through the uh, through the plugin will create like two objects on top of each other when you mirror it sometimes. I had to do quick quick mesh from an alpha image. Um, I do, but I don't really have time to demo that. Um, I think Michael Pavlovich might have a video on that on YouTube you might be able to find. I would look that up. Good, good, good. Just checking my density here. Just gonna use this cloth brush to kind of pull up. Hello, hello, welcome. Okay, this eye cavity is a little too big. Gonna push it in. We notice that I'm I'm looking at my model from all different angles at all times. That's why I think videos of my sculpting make people a little nauseous because I'm constantly spinning it around. Sometimes I'll make a, a cut like with this detail brush like this and then smooth it out because it still alters the, the surface even though I don't want it that sharp, you know? This animal with a big cavity and small eye like that exists in real life? Um, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, human eyeballs don't really fill the cavity too much, but they're not small like this either. What brush was this? Uh, this is my detail brush. I give all these brushes away for free on my website. You can just go get them, but um, 
it's basically the damn standard brush that ships with ZBrush, but altered a bit. So it doesn't, there's a couple things that, like if you use the damn standard, sometimes you'll see it has like a, it looks like a sewing machine. It'll leave these little dots. Or when you go around a corner, it'll leave these like slices around the corner. And this detail brush doesn't do that. But it's essentially just the damn standard brush. The reason it's called the damn standard brush is because the guy who made it, his name's Damien. He's been at the Zebra Summit before. Great guy. Yeah, Damien standard. <laughs> Let's uh let's get some color in there, shall we? Just for funsies. Get those weird names. Yeah, I think damn standard is probably the weirdest. It sounds like a swear word. It's the damn standard brush. <laughs> Grab a stitch. Oh, ho hood? Is that what that word is? Hood? I don't think I've ever seen hood. <laughs> that's, oh, that's interesting. I had to read that like three or four times to get it. Hood. I like it. <laughs> no worries. Who would name their baby Grab? <laughs> well, there's no such grab. There's no grab in ZBrush, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. I wanted to give you a heads up. Having a mixed chat while simulcasting is something Twitch is actively stopping. To change their terms of service, where you can't have YouTube comments appearing on screen. Oh, interesting. Oh, they got a strike. So, um, <laughs> yeah, David. Where's that damn standard brush? Um, interesting. I'll have to tell. So this isn't my stream. I just stream on this channel for Maxon. It's Maxon's channel. So, uh, I guess I could turn it. I guess I might have to do this. And just have it not on screen, but just answer questions. I'll just leave it off. But, uh, they're, so Maxon is not, they're not streaming on there to make money or anything. Uh, they're just streaming to spread the knowledge of their software so it's not like they're partnered or anything like that buzz this out a little bit buzz it out Why is people, man, getting all these phone calls and, and popular today? Also, super nice meeting you at Zebra Summit. Axel Truth. Oh, thanks. I'm going to open that in a different window. Okay. Thanks for that. I'll let them know. So they can they can spread the news. Yeah, I'm sure it was nice meeting you too. I can't remember you by your uh your your Twitch. You probably have to see your art or your face <laughs> in order to remember who you are. Okay. Let's try to get 
get this cut in a little bit. Oh, okay. Got you, got you, got you. Yep. <laughs> it's funny how you describe yourself. That's true. Worked. I'm pretty sure I know. Okay, and then there's this other brush, this pinch brush that I love a lot. This started as a ma cut brush. That's another interesting name, ma. And it stands for Malicus the Black. <laughs> Unfortunately, Malicus has since passed away. He will always be remembered through his brush. Brush lore, yep. Okay, let's get some ears going. It's got these fins. These fins are hilarious. Okay, let's get some ears on there. I think I'm gonna make them this color. Squish them, split them. Oh goodness. Okay, if you're trying to rotate something and it starts to bend like this, sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. <laughs> I like how I'm talking through his ears. So how you change that is the focal shifts. Uh, you change this. I think it's minus 100, then it won't do that anymore. Sometimes you want it. Imagine walking on his two lower fins. It's a big old head. Yep. <laughs> you make that sound too, like that cartoon twinkle toes sound. Some whiter. Thinner. Okay. This is a perfect opportunity to use AccuCurve. So AccuCurve, turn it on, make them pointy. Okay, so now how do we flop them over and make them kind of shaped like this. So first I want to curve them. Well, let's split them so they're in different subtools. So they're kind of by themselves so I can solo, solo them just by themselves. And then um, let's kind of mask this off using mask lasso. I just adjusted my camera. Let's do that better. Okay, mask it kind of down the center as best as we can. Okay, and then we can blur it, sharpen it. Okay, and why I'm doing this is because I want the center to be unmasked so I can grab my gizmo and just kind of pull the whole thing, but that's not working very well. All right, forget, forget that. I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna actually use, sometimes what you try doesn't work and that's okay. But I want more density up here in the top. See how it's getting kind of stretched out. So I'm gonna go ahead and Z remesh it at the same, get some more density up in here. So that gave me what I wanted. 
Now I can smooth it out. Okay, so now I'm going to line up a gizmo, make it point down the length of this, turn it to the side, kind of push it in, rotate this so it's aiming down the length as much as I can. Try to point that arrow at the tip right here. And then we'll put it at the base. Then we can go into this gear and click on, there's a bunch of different deformers we can try. Um, there's just a regular deformer and that will put a cage around this whole thing like this. And what this will do is it will allow us to take these points. Okay, whoops. Come on. I can get them. Okay. I can take these points and then um, I think I can select them like this and push them back in space. And that will give me the curve that I want. Okay. So masking and I think selecting will also work with these. Yeah. So I want to show just like these six right here. And then push them kind of forward and make it have that cup. And I don't have enough along the length, so I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more. I'm going to divide this by this many this time. And it does, when you divide it, it does get rid of your edits that you did before. So just be aware of that. But basically I want to just manipulate these two and maybe these two these two and sure these three at the bottom okay now i can push them back in space and make this whole thing cupped and now i also want to bend them over so i can clear that selection and i'm holding down just masking and then i'm adding alt to make it white and then the problem with this is it's going to spin it's going to keep the um, the gizmo in the middle of your selection. It's moving the gizmo automatically. I wish I could move it down here and use it as a pivot down here, but it doesn't let me do that. So I just have to kind of move it, bend it, move it, bend it like this. Okay, come back here. Maybe I said if I hit F, it'll center my camera better. Maybe not. Weird, it's not letting me center my camera, so I gotta kind of spin around it weird. And then what I can do too, if I can get my camera sort of where I want it, is I can also arc it this way. So it kind of arcs to the inside. Okay, now that I have it where I kind of want it, now I can do uh, an accept and it'll go away and now I can continue sculpting with just regular sculpt brushes. So I can start to make this thinner down here. Like this. And we got now a scooped bent ear. And I can see how it kind of goes up on this side. I kind of like that. I'm going to do it on both sides. So I'm just going to use my move brush and make it kind of the tip go up like that. Yeah, and so that's how you can kind of get some complex shapes out of something rather simple. Let's shorten this up a lot. Make it more simplified. Gonna shrink it down to where, I'm just looking at where this connects and it's really small. So now we can take this pivot, put it where we want it. Kind of get it into the head here. Uh, push it in to the surface. Kind of bend it back, make them larger. Yeah, that's fun. Do you by chance make? What kind of question is that, Mark? <laughs> Do I make silk purses? <laughs> it's like a it's like a trick question. What?
like something the Joker would say on Batman. <laughs> you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Make a silk purse out of a pig's ear? I've never heard of that before. <laughs> That's why I didn't get it, Mark. Sorry. I ruined it. How would, how would you do that? Or is that just a saying? It's old. <laughs> Sorry. I'm old, but I've never heard of that. Okay, there's your ears. And I could have just, well, not just as easily, but I could have just pushed a sphere around and, and got that shape too. You don't have to use those bend modifiers. It's just kind of a shortcut. Okay, so let's get the fin happening this big blue fin to make it actually look like a fish these fins to make it look like a fish okay so if i ever have something like this what i'll typically do is i'll either Ex like mask extract it from a, sh a temporary shape or I will draw the temporary geometry on there and, and make some thickness out of it. That's probably what I'm going to do with this. Um, but it has some complex things like, like say this little cut right here, this hole right here, and this little extra bit up here. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's start by making a plane. How you do that is you have all this this list of stuff here. Hold on a second. Let's fill this object. Um, and then I'm going to append a, come on. I'm going to append this plane 3D and we'll put it there. Okay. So let's turn it on and make it double-sided so we can see it. Why? Oh, I got to be down one I was still on the ears all right and now we want to uh, send the gizmo home to the center reset it and then I'm gonna start to rotate gosh dang it I'm on the ear still what is going on okay let's do this for real this time okay send it home reset it and then start to rotate it and then hold down shift to make it snap and then you can snap it to the side and then put it right behind the pig like this. Give yourself enough space that you can do this. Okay. How do I want to do this? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if I want to draw the geometry on there. I think I will. It's just so much more controlled if I do and so much cleaner. So let's do transparent. Because if I turn on transparency, I can actually draw through the model. If I don't, then you can't, I can't. So this is the density of a plane that I've inserted. It's not too crazy. Um, use a topology brush, and then I'll just start drawing topology. I want to make my brush kind of smaller in scale, and then go from like the forehead, and then up and out like this. And then from the butt, I'm going to go out like this. And then from where it ends ish, just kind of down like that. And we'll just start filling it in some in the middle. And then maybe one right here, divide that, divide this one. Okay, and let's just do every other. Kind of like when I'm making eyebrows. And I'll worry about the hole in the slit later on after I draw this. Now we can come in with an opposing line and just connect all these along the, the body curve. 
Okay, there's our, and what you wanna look for when you're doing this brush is you wanna look for the little green dots that occur. So see all those little green dots? Wherever you cross two lines, it should make a green dot. If it doesn't, you need to draw it again. Okay, so I'm gonna go down and then up and back to here. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can move these later on. Okay, so something like that, we have our fin, and I drew this, uh, this last one as a triangle, which is fine, but if you want a quad, you can just do an extra line like that. It'll make it into a quad. Okay, so now um, what I'm gonna do is draw a middle line down the center, all the way through here like this, skipping that line and just kind of going around. And one thing I've told my students is the line shape does not matter. What matters is where the lines cross. So what I mean by that is, and I'll, I'll prove it right now. So basically, I'm, I just want to make a quad right here. Uh, let's pretend, okay, I want to make a quad. Um, essentially, what I can do is I can start here and go across to here and it'll make a quad, okay? But I could also start here and go blah, 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 and then cross right there. It'll still make a quad. And when you do that, you have to make the noise. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the, the, to prove my point, the only thing you need to, to, to know is where your lines cross is what matters, okay? <laughs> okay, so now, uh, now that we have this, basically this fin laid out, oh, there's seven, it says there's 722 people watching today. I think that's the most I've ever had. Welcome everyone. Holy cow, that's cool. If it's true, it's cool. Okay, so let's say I want to make, uh, uh, let's make the slit first. All I have to do to make the slit is basically go down like this, really close where I want it. And then I will, uh, I'll delete these quads after I build it. I'm trying to think if that's what I want to do. There's so many ways I can do this. 42 on Twitch, awesome. And then I might do the hole uh, later on too and make, make some quads out of it. But what I could do is I could draw, I'll just draw it in here, okay? So I'm gonna draw it like this. It's gonna be kind of tricky across here, across here, back like that. And there's my, this is gonna be my hole. There it is, and then I can basically Let's clean up some of these edges. Whoop. I'm currently working on my own thing. Beta from looking in. Just don't want to go looking for it. How do I save a custom view? Um, are you talking about a custom camera view, David? You can go to, there's two ways. You can go to uh, document and then go down to Z app link properties. And th there's a bunch of slots right here to save cameras. So you, and these words are just suggestions. You don't have to use them for like the front and the back or whatever, or you can just use custom. And you just click the word custom and it will save that camera view. So if I were to go zoop like this, I could go back to this, click on custom and it goes pops your camera right back to where it was. Is that what you're looking for? There's also, um, there's another one. I want to say in draw. Yeah, right here, front, back, up, down, left, right. I think, no, it's under camera, sorry. So right here, select camera. There's store camera right here. So you can store cameras. There's two places. I don't know why they have two places. The other way is old. This way is new. Uh, you can store it right there. And then you can uh, flip back and forth between your different cameras right here. You can rename what it, whatever it's named and you can select it right there. So, yep, sure. Okay, so now what I can do is come through this green dot, come over here and go through this green dot, and it should make two quads like that. And to clear out these little leaders, see these tails on here? I can just hold down Alt and just go across these two like this, and I can draw right through this green dot and right through this green dot, and it makes two more quads and you can see how it's starting to make this hole, right? 
just kind of getting rid of these, rid of these. I can come through here. And as long as I go through those, it should do the trick. This topology brush is tricky for sure. Once you get used to how it works and how it wants you to work, you can do it. Okay, so now, it, yes, it's a square hole. We'll get it round here in a second. Okay, so uh, let's see. How did you prevent a polygon from generating while two curves intersect in that brush? So I can choose the gaps in the surface. Um, basically, the only rule that there is is wherever you have either four green dots or three green dots, it's either gonna make a quad or a triangle. Anything more or less than that, you won't. So say, if I wanna get rid of, say, these two quads to eventually make this cut right here, um, I can hold down Alt and like erase these two lines and erase this line right here. You're basically holding down Alt and crossing a curve with a curve and it will delete it. So if that makes sense. What key did you hold to? Yeah, Alt. So here's the thing. If you, if you hold down Alt and just drag out here on the surface of whatever you're drawing on, not, not out in space, but if you let go, it will clean up everything. But if you only want to get rid of certain ones, you, you can just cross over one of these extra lines using just holding down Alt and crossing over it. If you don't, it was, it's, gonna, it's just going to put another curve right there. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's kind of how you do it. And then, um, so I'll have, uh, I'm going to scooch all these around after I make this, but basically this is what I'm after. And now that I'm all done, what I like to do is change my draw size to a one. And the reason why I do that is because it will give me a single sided sheet of polygons. If I don't, if I make it larger and I click on the surface, it's gonna give me thickness. See how it's got thickness now? Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. But for, for this instance, I just want a single sheet of polygons right in the middle of the scene. So I'm gonna turn my draw size to one and just click on the surface. Now, sometimes it doesn't register, so you have to do it a couple times. And now you can barely kind of see the, the new geometry buried into the plane. And so now what we gotta do is split that unmass points away from that plane and we can select our new fins and hide our plane. So now we have this, these fins or this big fin, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So now that we have this, now we can easily, uh, manipulate it. I'm stuck in the plot feeling a Zen Bob Ross quality. <laughs> Thanks man. You're not the first person to say that for sure. Sometimes I put people to sleep. <laughs> okay, so now let's make this fin actually look like the fin that it's supposed to look like. And uh, let's, let's even grab the, the blue color. We can start, start making it look like blue, but it's very polygonal. How do we make it not polygonal? Um, now, if I hit Shift F and show the polygons, what they actually look like, I'm thinking all the kind of cool ways I can, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, this is, I use this all the time. If I'm not using spheres to block out characters, I'm using thin planes to make, make things. So like I worked on uh, a long, it's been a long time now. I worked on Disney infinity and I made Loki and I made his cape. And what I did is I made us a, a temporary sphere in space. That was kind of the undulating shape that the cape I wanted to take. And, and then I did this exact same technique. I just drew the geometry on the top of that, that squished messed up sphere in the shape of a cape. So it had the undulation in it built into it already. I use it all the time. It's great. Okay. So now I can come in here and I can use the move brush to just kind of move these points around and create an actual hole and not a a square. I can move these around closer so they're not stretching so much. To circle or subdivide, at least in Blender. I'm not sure if the uh yeah, so so to, to make this have thickness, which is the equivalent 
of say a modifier, okay, um, there is dynamic right here. So you turn on dynamic, and that's essentially like adding a thickness modifier and a subdivision modifier in another program, okay? <laughs> and um, what I wanna do is overlap these two, but I can't really do it if they're both part of the same polygroup. So what I'm gonna do is, is hit auto groups and put them in each in their own polygroup. So then what I can do is get my move brush, turn on topological masking, and you can find this topological masking in the brush menu under auto masking topology. Okay, you can find it down there. And what that does is that makes it so whatever, uh, whatever vertice or edge or whatever I grab first, it's gonna leave the other one alone. So I can basically grab this and overlap it or grab this one, overlap it. And now I kind of have that, that cut happening. But this is, this is sharp and this is smooth because it's being subdivided. And I can also add, see this is still paper thin. I can add thickness. Um, this is where the, uh, this is kind of like a, a thickness modifier and it's gonna add thickness like this. So now it has thickness, but it also automatically comes with creasing. So it has creasing all the way around it. And I want it to kind of be smooth. I don't want it to have creasing. So I'm going to uncrease all. Okay, now it looks all weird. I broke it. Well, um, again, this dynamic subdivisions is like having two modifiers put on your mesh. And there's an order in which they work. Either it's gonna subdivide first and add the thickness second, or it's gonna add the thickness first and subdivide second. So right now, it's adding the thickness, or it's, it's subdividing, then adding the thickness and looking weird. So basically, there's a button right here that flips the order. So if I turn that off, now we have it so it looks nice and smooth and it has thickness like this. So if we turn this off, it's looking better. And it's still pretty low poly. So what we can do is we can crank up the subdivision levels and make it even smoother. So I'm, I just cranked it up to four. You don't wanna crank this up unless your polygons are very, very, very low. Yeah, you could also use live booleans to put the, the hole in there if you want. But you're not gonna get this clean of topology if you do that. But it is another option. What's up, Ian? Be careful. Okay, and I did miss this little tiny fin back here. We, we can get that later. But now we can just sit and adjust this and, okay. And another thing we can do is we can add the thickness in without adding the subdivision levels. So if we look at this fin, we can turn down the subdivision levels and only see the thickness. Let's take a look at the floor plane and you can see that this is kind of straddling that, that center line of the world because the thickness kind of added thickness on both sides when we had that plane, okay? And I want to apply this thickness. And the reason I want to apply it is because I cannot crease an, e an edge edge, an edge edge. <laughs> so see, the, see these uh, edges with thickness? I can't get in there with the Z modeler brush, increase this little edge to make this point right there, or these two points right here. Because that edge doesn't really exist, it's being, sh it's being shown to me through dynamic subdivisions. Okay, so I'm gonna have to apply it and make it real. So now I have thickness because I applied it. And if I want to add subdivisions back, like temporary subdivisions, like dynamic subdivisions, I can just turn this back on, but it's gonna add another level of thickness, which I don't want. So I'm gonna take this level of thickness and turn it down to zero, and then I'm gonna turn the subdivisions back up. So just like I said, it's like, it's like messing around with two different modifiers, a thickness modifier and a subdivision surface modifier. You can think about it that way. And again, this button allows you to flip in which order it takes effect. But just know that this is only temporary. This is showing you what it's going to look like if you if you apply it, okay? 
So now we have subdivision levels and we have thickness and we're good to go. And now, since we have thickness, we can crease edges. So I wanna crease this edge back here. I'm gonna turn uh, dynamic off. It's just easier to get to the edges if dynamic is turned off. If you turn it on, you'll see these little yellow dots, these little orange dots. Um, that's representing where the vertices are in space, like where they really are. So if I turn this off, see, look at this point right here. If I add it, see the point's still there. That's, that's what that's representing. But you can't see the edges. I can't see an edge to crease it. So turn it off, grab your Z modeler brush, hover over this edge, hit space bar, go to crease single edge. So how the Z modeler brush works is you, you have a, a list of actions that you can do. And it also depends on what you started with by hovering. So if you hover on a face, it's gonna give you a different set of actions versus hovering over an edge or a vertice. It's gonna give you a different list. Okay, so that's context sensitive is what that is. And in this context, I want to crease this edge. So I'm gonna hover over an edge. I already set this to crease an edge. Now if I click on it, now it's gonna actually crease it. So now if I hit D, you can see it's very, it's creased now. And I think I do want to have the creases around these edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, say crease polygroups and that's going to put a crease around everything and we're going to look at that but man that's sharp i don't want it that sharp so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lower the the sharpness which is this is my custom menu but it's near the uh, crease by polygroups um you can see the crease level and by default, it's set to 15. That means you would have to subdivide something 15 times before that crease would get loose, before it would get smooth, okay? I'm gonna turn that down to like a two or a one. And you see how it changed? So if I crank that up, it goes really sharp. If I go down to like a two, it gets softer. And what that means is it will hold that crease for two subdivision levels and then let it go for anything after that. And it's, it's scene wide, so it's going to affect all the creases across your entire. Well, I think it's sub sub tool wide. Sorry, it's per sub tool. So now it's set to two, and since this is set to four, it's getting two subdivisions levels, two subdivision levels worth of no crease. Okay. Yep, I'm using a Cintiq uh, 27 inch, an old older one. Some refer Z modeler to the artsy cousin of poly modeling. <laughs> I don't know why I thought. <laughs> Wilbur, that is hilarious and accurate. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Kind of picture it as a like an artsy lady with big big red hair. <laughs> like I'll take it. I don't know why I think about that. Okay. So I'm gonna crease that, crease that. And I think I'm gonna crease this one. I can't quite see this one to crease it, so I'm gonna hide the other one and crease that. Did that work? No. Crease it, there it goes. Okay, so now it'll hold on to those edges. What kind of fish? Hey Anna, this is a boar fish. <laughs> boar fish. It's fun to say and fun to look at. So let's start to get, you know, I think I'm gonna crease this one too. Let's get in there and crease it. Yeah, that's just enough, I think. That's fun. And I'll, these, these different dark blue lines through here, I would probably just paint those in. Let's just keep going with the, the shaping of this. This is much closer to the body down here. If you look at the distance right there and it kind of comes out back here and then gets closer to the body again down here. 
Okay. I like that. And what another thing you could do is make it thinner on the outer edge and thicker near the body so it kind of actually has a taper to it. It's like a boar fish. <laughs> okay, so I can get mask lasso and then just mask this whole outer edge like this. Invert that, look at it from the front and just kind of scale it on down thin. Invert that mask and scale that out thicker. And since we, this is something that if I did a, a mesh extraction, that would be difficult to do because there would be too, too much density between both sides. Does that make sense? So it would just, and this is good to do for 3D printing because that would add more structure and more stiffness and thickness near the body where it's connected and more thinness out here. So you can kind of see it like this. And uh, actually increase that front as well. It looks like um, it looks like I widen the middle the middle loop as well. So I'm going to undo that actually, and then because I just want to increase the 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 bottom line. So let's mask that off. Okay, we can just increase that one. There we go. That works. So now it's nice and thick, kind of like a knife. You know, it's thicker on one side. Okay, well now let's go down to this guy again and crease it. And we could crease this end one. Why not? Okay, and this go this taper is pretty sharp. So we can take that in. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that, how that turned out nice and clean. And then we would just do that again with, um, with the small fin. Yeah, we're getting climbing up there. It's almost 800 people watching crazy. How many people are watching on Twitter by chance? You can just say me or whatever. I'm curious because it is streaming to Twitter and I don't, I, I usually don't think of Twitter as a streaming platform. Is it Twitter? Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, 679 people on Twitter. Is that true? Yeah, Twitter. Not Twitch. Twitter. It, it's also streaming to Twitch as well. So, um, yeah, there's five channels. The Pixel Logic channel, the Max on ZBrush channel, the, uh, uh, Twitch or Twitter, sorry, Facebook, the Max on ZBrush YouTube channel, and Max on Training Team. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know either. And now I guess Instagram has streaming as well. Yeah, everybody's getting in on the action. <laughs> so most of the people are are watching from there. If it's true, it it could totally just be people, you know, just like. <laughs> Swinging on by and not even paying attention. Swiping on by. Oops. Let's fill this. I don't know how it registers viewers. If they actually have to have, have the video open and be watching it. Or what? I don't know. I'm super curious though. sure I'm saving it uh, wouldn't this have to be airtight to print uh, yeah yeah it would be so um, towards the end if I were to print this I would basically uh, remesh by union everything together and it would it would be it would be airtight and like this hole doesn't matter that that's okay that would print if that's what you're after it's like 
if there's a hole like in the actual mesh itself leading to the inside it wouldn't work but this is all the way through okay let's get this little fin on here get back here let's get orange Okay, so yeah, I was thinking maybe maybe not as many numbers as I was thinking. I was like, holy cow! I think I think the most I've ever had like actually watching is like two hundred. Now it's saying it's up to eight hundred and seven. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. There's not enough interaction for that many people to be watching. <laughs> but it's cool nonetheless. Can't pretend. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not seeing anybody like comment from Twitch or from Twitter. Sorry. TW, those words are too close together. Like Discord and Discourse used to drive me crazy. Understand the hole. The hole is okay. I was just confused because when you're currently doing is not airtight. What what is not airtight? Hey George. Hey, no worries. Thanks for stopping by. I'm loving that new creature you've been doing. He's great. Guys, George is a is a student of mine that has kind of taken the training and ran with it. So now he does these crazy cool anatomy blockouts that he offers up on Art Station and Gumroad. You can go check them out. Let's drop this down a little bit. Oh, it's X now. That does help, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, goodness. So, David, are you saying that this fin is not watertight, or what? what's not watertight? It, like, the connection between all of these objects is not... From the seven thirty. Hey Neil, you tried it. So how is it? Report. <laughs> how's the how's the viewing? How or what tool do you use to make the border of an eyelid? From where the eyelashes begin. This is not the case, but in a human or creature with eyelids, using move brush generates small blobs. You have to use uh, less geometry. Uh, the, like the the less dense like not so dense if you're really dense that's when you create blobs and stuff so yeah if you watch any of my videos back um you'll see that i take i usually take uh this this pinch brush and i do a really slow uh kind of a pinch around the bottom of whatever i'm doing so like say if i have this and this is kind of messy right now uh, so essentially say I'm trying to clean this up right here a little bit. I can just run pinch along this and it'll give me a really clean line. Kind of come back in here. And if I want to go like right here, I would do another one, a really clean pinched line right there like that. Okay. I do want to have this one, but not the other one. Does that answer your question? Don't like it. Very limited control. Like, can you, can you, well, I guess you did chat, but 
So like no playback speed or hopping around or anything like that, super limited. Super hard to break down into primitives, I bet. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Gazella, welcome. I don't know about the boss, but thank you. Oh, goodness. I got subdivisions on this. So if you're ever sculpting and you're using Sculptress Pro or something like that and your computer just starts to slow way down, make sure you don't have dynamic subdivisions turned on because that will slow your machine down. Subdivision, dynamic subdivision levels only really work with low, low polygons. So you're doing one of Alexander's characters He's so good. I made a golem. Yeah, I love his golem. <laughs> Welcome, Signor. How are you? Uh, you have like the fish. I don't know if that's airtight because like 215 and the fin, which is not part of the same object as the fish. So the entire thing. Okay. Yeah, David, I, I will, I would combine them all like, like stitch them in the end. I leave them as separate objects, but right before I go to 3d print them, I select, I put everything in one sub tool and then remesh by union, which stitches everything together and makes it watertight and gets rid of interior geometry. Does that make sense? So I don't build it watertight as I'm modeling. Follow George Zika on Instagram already. Highly recommend for anyone looking for stylized anatomy models with good colors, defining the different muscles. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Ah, it's, looks like we're over time, but I'm going to show you, I want to show you George's stuff. If that's okay, George. The latest one that we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at this guy. Holy cow. <laughs> that's so fun. But yeah, look at all this anatomy and how it's like, going in into each other and how these muscles are kind of going yeah really really good love it love it and you, you got the best brushes over here too <laughs> this user interface <laughs> all right no worries david did you understand what i was saying hopefully Okay, I think I'm going to end it right there. I think we've got some some good progress on this guy. There's still uh, there's still a bunch left to do on it, but that's as far as I can make it in two hours. Um, thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. I know you have other things to do on your Mondays, but I appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, it's it's always fun. So thank you very much. And just a reminder. I give away my brushes, my user interface, and my ruler file for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I also teach a course over there. You can check it out. And I don't advertise it, but I do do uh, mentoring. If you're interested in some group mentorship, you can ch uh, just send me an email through the contact link on my website. You'll find it there. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Happy sculpting, and we'll catch you all next Monday. All right, cheers, everybody. We'll see ya. Bye.